Thornbridge, Lord Marples, bottle conditioned, bitter. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Bows Reviews. This one from Thornbridge is Lord Marple's Classic Bottle Conditioned Classic Bitter. Now, I've just tried the Five Points uh, Best Bitter and I thought it was absolutely amazing. And they've just started doing this stuff now in Morrison's and I don't know why they've started doing it, but whoever's buying the beer for Morrison's really does know what they're doing when it comes to beers, I have to say, because they've got a very, very good selection and a lot of quality beers. And now you've got the usual Green King shit and all the Marston's bollocks that, you know, is, is synonymous with every supermarket you go to, but they have got a very diverse selection of quality English beers. They do the Old Peculiar, they do the Oakham, some of the Oakham beers, which ain't bad. They do uh, the Bath Ales Gem. They do some local ones around here as well. Um, the, um, the Sussex Brewery um, Pale Ale, which is really nice. They also do the Classics, Theakston's, Old Peculiar. They do the Timothy Taylor Landlord and Bolt Maker as well, which are two or three fantastic beers. So in general, I, I'm pretty lucky to live near a decent Morrison's that does such a wide variety of beer. They also do German um, beers as well. They do um, Fru Kolsch and they do the Hofbrau Lager as well. And uh, Weinstefana, um, not Weinstefana, uh, Paulana uh, Weiss beer as well. Now, <laughs> I'm not being paid by Morrison's, believe me, I give them cunts enough money so they're not paying me. But I do have to say, and I will say, that whoever's buying the beer, you're doing a fucking great job. But they've started, well, they've they've expanded now and they're getting this stuff in from Thornbridge. Now I've had quite, a th if you look at the videos that I've put on the channel very early on when it first started out back in 2019, there are quite a lot of craft brew beers on there because that was all the rage and I thought that's what you needed to do to get onto YouTube to review craft beer when I realized that, it, that's Percy snoring down there by the way, um, when I realised that basically craft beer really wasn't my thing, i.e. the American IPA pale ale fruit cocktail type thing wasn't my thing, I thought, fuck it, do you know what, let's do the traditional stuff, and I've stuck with it ever since. And Thornbridge have quite a few, I wouldn't say traditional, but they've got quite a few run-of-the-mill beers, should I say. So they do they do two lagers. They do a Kirsch as well, actually. Um, not impressed by them, I have to say. And I've reviewed them early on in the channel. And if you look at my reviews of the Thornbridge beers, even the Jaipur as well, which when it first came out, I thought this is a really interesting beer. And then it just went fucking downhill. I don't know what happened with that. I think they got too big. And um, it was, yeah, it, it just really didn't appeal to me after that. But the overall opinion of Thornbridge beers was just very, very average. Not great beers at all, and I'm surprised that they're still going, but they are. And in fact, they're in a very, very strong position as well. They've expanded quite a few times, and they have they own quite a lot of pubs. I was recently up in York, and I see that they've got a pub up there, and uh, they're based in a place called Bakewell, which is in Derbyshire. So if you've, if you've ever had Bakewell tarts, that's where they come from. Bakewell tarts, fucking lovely. Almond and cherry, you will not go wrong with him. And a bit of icing on the top. Who said English food is crap? Uh, what was I saying about Thornbridge? Yeah, Thornbridge, they've been going since 2005. This was their first beer. This was the first one they brewed. And I don't know how it's managed to escape my radar. I suppose it just hasn't 
hasn't been available, but I saw it the other day in Morrison's and I thought, you know what, I saw it along with the five point stuff and I've just reviewed the five point stuff and that was fantastic. It really did surprise me. A really, really nice beer. And it was a single hop bitter, which there are occasional single hop bitters that do come out and the two that I've had so far have been very nice. Normally you'd get a mixture of hops in English bitters, you'd maybe get some Fuggles, some Goldings, maybe even the odd like Challenger hop thrown in as well. A mixture. Very few brewers do single hops, but it looks like, from what I can gather, that Thornbridge have done a single hop bitter as well. And the single hop bitter, sorry, the single hop that they put in their bitter are Goldings, <coughs> are Goldings. Now Goldings, is a very, I wouldn't say it's a very generic term, but you have varieties of Goldings. You have East Kent Goldings, which are, as the name would suggest, um, native to Kent. Uh, Canterbury specifically is where they were first, first grown and developed. Uh, you also have Styrian Goldings, which are grown in Slovenia, which are in fact Fuggles hops. So yeah, don't ask me how that's one, that, that one's worked out. But you also have other varieties of Goldings as well, and it, I think it's a bit of a, I wouldn't say it's a catch-all name, but there are varieties on there. But they, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll talk about the hops in the next section. But as I say, Thornbridge, they've been going quite a long time. Jaipur is probably their, well, it is their flagship beer. This was, however, was their first beer, and that's brewed in 2005, and it was brewed, they very come from very humble, well, no, that's a lie, they don't come from very humble backgrounds, and, and the, they were, or well, the owner, I think, owns uh, Thornbridge Hall, which is like a, a stately home, and he started brewing beer, he, they hired two brewers, and they started brewing beer on a very, very small scale in um, Thornbridge Hall, and uh, this was the first one, and the name, Lord Marples, comes from the fellow who owned, I think, Thornbridge Thornbridge Hall. He was never a lord. He was always Mr. Marples. But Thornbridge have decided to call him Lord Marples for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe they've lost their marbles. Badum chish. My career in comedy will never ever get on the ground with shit jokes like that. Um, as I say, Thornbridge, not really a brewer that I'm a massive fan of, to be honest. I think their beer is fucking bang average. I really do. And all the ones I've tried so far, the lager, it falls into the classic English lager or UK lager category. And yeah, it just ain't great. They do a Kirsch as well, which is called Tazara, I think it's called. And um, they don't call it a Kirsch, they call it a Cologne style beer, which if anyone, if anyone knows their beers, then it's a Kirsch is basically what they're trying to do. Um, they've got a little Oktoberfest pack going, 40 quid, if you don't mind. Um, and it's got the Lucas, they call it Hellas, ain't great, and that Tazara, which I've not tried, and I'm in two minds whether I try, I'm not going to go out of my way to buy it, I know that if, if it does turn up at Morrison's I may buy it, but yeah, the, I think the Lucas stuff is down there and I reviewed it once, I ain't going to do it again. It just, it just confirms my views on craft brewers to an extent, I mean I, I have been occasionally very harsh on craft brewers, mainly because they're just... Well, they, I think they rely a lot on American hops and, yeah, the beers that they do. Cloudwater, I've got, a, um, for some reason, I don't know why, but I'm uh, signed up to Cloudwater's um, uh, newsletter. And uh, they, they just, every week they've got a new line of beers. And you just think, how can you get consistency if you're brewing different types of beer every, every other week? And, yeah, it shows. I remember trying some of their the Cloudwater Pilsner, which was not fucking cheap. Cloudwater Pilsner, it had American hops in it. Where's the tradition? What, what makes it even a, a Pilsner? I think that might be even be on the channel. Was it on the channel? I don't know. But it was fucking rubbish. It certainly wasn't a Pilsner. And uh, yeah, I was, um, I was drinking a Pilsner the other day. Um, name of the brewer escapes me, but they used um, Styrian, Styrian Wolf hops instead of sart tops, which is supposed to, for a Pilsner, for me anyway, that's what makes a Pilsner, and they were using, who was that? Oh, that was someone, a Pilsner, oh, it was the fucking Cameron's, Cameron's uh, Overkill, and yeah, that got a one out of 10. You know, if you're gonna talk bollocks, they were saying it's based on a Czech Pilsner, fuck off, don't take the piss out of me, mate, I'm fucking not having it, 
But there you go, that's just me ranting and fucking raving. Before my blood pressure goes even higher than it is now, let's get on to the next section. Right, Lord Marple. Lord Marples, I should say, 4%, 500ml bottle. Uh, Lord Marples was the first ever Thornbridge beer, brewed in 2005 and named after Mr. Marples, an aspiring former owner of Thornbridge Hall. It pours an attractive mahogany, bringing forth flavours of honey and caramel. I'll get onto the flavours in a bit, with just a light bitterness in the finish to keep it balanced, okay? This bottle contains fresh, live beer, bottle conditioned to create natural carbonation and the flavour you would expect from a pint of car scale in a pub. Please pour carefully, leaving the yeast in the bottle. Again, this is one that they always say to do. They say to leave the yeast in the bottle, and I never do. The reason I don't do it, I suppose, is because of my fascination and almost borderline obsession with Weiss beer, where you have to, and Belgian beer as well, where you positively have to get the yeast into the beer because it gives it its flavour. I think, I know it's dead yeast cells and all that, but yeast really does impart a lot of flavour. And I don't think brewers really, I mean, they, they, they'll they list the hops and they'll list the, the malt, if you're lucky. Luckily, um, Thornbridge do, I'll get onto them in a sec. But never, never underestimate the flavours that you get from the yeast, because yeast is what makes beer. Now, if you're drinking German beers, specifically Hellas's and you get that nice honey flavour and you wonder how the hell do they get so much sweetness from a beer that supposedly conf conforms to the Reinheitsgebot so there's no added sugar, there's no added syrup etc. Well that's coming from the yeast and yeast really does give beer its character. Vice beer wouldn't be vice beer without the yeast. That's where all the flavour comes from. So there you go and a lot of Belgian beers as well it's all about the yeast. However with British beers, it's not. It's British beers, it's traditional British beers, it's more about the hop character. But I still always pull it, pour in the sediment. So Thornbridge, I'm not going to take your advice. Not Nothing personal against Thornbridge, I just don't do it anyway. I always get the hop, uh, the, the yeast residue in there. So there you go. Uh, this is bottle conditioned and it has a sell by date on it, but if it's bottle conditioned, it will last a hell of a lot longer, in my opinion. But that's, uh, that's by the by. Now let's get on to the brew sheet. Thankfully, with these craft brewers, they do list the ingredients, which I really do like. German brewers, it's rare. I don't know why they don't do that, but they don't. However, English craft brewers and craft brewers in general, they, they make a big point about putting the uh, ingredients on the can. And for beer geeks like me, that is a real boon. However, there are caveats with that, I mean, you, you get you get what's in the beer, but they don't list the amount. So you know if, if they put a very very tiny amount of something in there, which you think is going to be a real characteristic of a beer, it may not be. So it just gives you an indication of what's in the beer. In this case, for the hops, as I've mentioned, there's only Golden's hops in there. It doesn't say which Golden's hops, but Golden hops generally have a spicy, earthy flavour. Sometimes honey as well gives it a little bit of sweetness to it as well, and uh, yeah, you, you, they're, they're standard in um, top fermented English ales. Goldings and Fuggles, the two go together, really do. Uh, the malt that's in here, you have Maris Otter. Now Maris Otter is a fantastic malt, and as I said in the last five points, best bit of review, it's rare that you get a bad beer with Maris Otter. I think if you've brewed a bad beer and you put Maris Otter in there, not only have you wasted your money, because Maris Otter is quite an expensive malt, I'd question why you've put it in there and can you fucking brew at all. But that's just personal taste. It also contains caramel as well. The caramel, as the name would suggest, does give it a slightly sweet caramel type flavour, caramel, you know, when you get caramel on, on English beers, it usually comes from there. German brewers um, use caramel quite a lot as well, certainly in uh, darker beers, in Dunkels and Doppelbox, etc. And it all, also contains crystal malt. Crystal malt could be any malt. It's malt that has um, the sugar from, sugar from um, partially 
germinated or, or very early stage germination on the uh, on the on the husk which will feed the new buds as they appear however the buds are killed off in the kiln and the sugar is left and it's crystallized with the heat and it does give it a nice sweet flavor and you've got chocolate malt as well which as the name suggests gives it a, a bitter dark chocolate flavor so there you go used a lot quite a, quite a lot in uh, porters as well chocolate malt it's not the sweet milk chocolate you're thinking of it's the dark chocolate so there's some bitterness on there as well um, this is a won six awards since 2009 so i have got reasonably high hopes for it but again with my previous experience of thornbridge i've yet to have a standout beer from them maybe this will be the one who knows let's get it open find out right on the last one the five points best bitter i poured a little bit out into the glass to get the aroma and took a mouthful and it was extremely bitter it wasn't until i poured out the whole lot that i got the full range of flavors so i'm going to do that i'm going to put the come on auto focus don't fuck about there's the thornbridge cap thornbridge logo standard stuff um, i'm going to do that on this one i'm just going to pour a little bit out and i'm going to see what this is like now, I do love me an English bitter. And if you're in Germany or you're a German viewer, the nearest you'd get to it, if you've never tasted an English bitter, is probably Altbier. But that's bottom fermented and it does have a certain German characteristic to it. Best bitter does just scream England. <laughs> right, on the nose. Mmm, quite nice. There's a very herbal aroma coming from it and slightly earthy but it's it's got a hmm it's got a herbal note to it which is almost catty when i say catty i mean like cat's piss but in a good way if you know what i mean mm. very nettily that's what i i would describe it as um does it smell like a typical english bitter um, no, it doesn't. But as I say, there's only a little bit in there. It does look, it's certainly got the colour for it. They've got that right. Um, it's slightly hazy. Slow moving carbonation. The head is dissipating quite quickly, which is a little bit of a disappointment. That aroma's, I wouldn't say troubling, but it doesn't, it doesn't smell that great, to be honest. I will say that. I mean, with the five, I am going to compare it to the five points brune. Uh, best bitter because they're both craft brewers uh, admittedly Thornbridge is a bigger brewer a much bigger brewer um, wow there really is a lot of there really is a lot of them golden characteristics on there there's like earthiness grassy bitter grass bitter green grass and like a nettle as well I mean it doesn't sound very appealing but let's Let's get the tasting out of the way and, and find out exactly what's going on here because I'm not getting any aroma from the malt at all. So let's see what's going on. Good health. Mmm. And here we go again with Thornbridge. Right, the body is weak on that, almost watery. Not much of a finish and mild bitter flavors. Oh. That is a bit of a disappointment. Maybe I've been spoiled by the five point stuff, but let's not judge too quickly. I'm going to get everything into the glass before I give you my, my verdict on there, because as I say, you really, I mean, and again, I said it in the last video as well, some beer reviewers 
will just take a couple of mouthfuls and they'll make their mind up and that'll be it i.e. the craft beer channel which they're knowledgeable blokes I mean they do that but I, I think to get the real the real character of a beer you have to drink at least half a bottle of it or half a pint to get a good idea of what's going on because there's been beers that I've drunk before which have tasted not great at the start but the more you get into them the better they get and beers that have been initially good on the mouthful have on the first mouthful I should say have gradually gotten worse as you go down so I don't think you can really judge a beer on a couple of mouthfuls not not properly anyway in my opinion right that's that's in the glass now the head's a bit big for an English beer there's quite a lot of carbonation in that but let's get it down the hatch anyway I'm gonna have another go Right, there are mild flavours in there, and at 4% you could argue that it's not a bad session bitter, because, again that's cloudy, I'm just looking at that, can you see that? No you can't, I'll tell you what I'll do, I did this on the last video as well, let me get my phone, I will give you an indication of what it tastes like. what it tastes like, what it looks like, you twat. Nice amber colour, dark amber, copper. They say mahogany. Well, yeah, I suppose you could argue it's mahogany. But yeah, that's what it looks like. Now, um, it sounds like I'm giving it a hard time. However, and this is, let's, let me turn my, my light off on my phone. This, it sounds like I'm giving it a hard time. I'm not, because beer like this does have its place in the UK beer market, i.e. a session bitter. I wouldn't have called it a classic bitter, I would call this a session bitter. At 4%, that's a good session ABV. Flavours are rounded, it's actually tasting a little bit more, more palatable now, it's got, it's got a bit more hop character. Wow, oh that's come to life now. There we go. There's a bit of a finish on there now. A lot more of the bitter hop character, quite spicy. Again, quite rounded. There's a good balance between the, the malts that are in here. The, the dominant flavor is caramel on this. That's what it's putting me in mind of, but there is elements of them hops coming through there as well, i.e. the spiciness and the earthiness too. Uh, the, the honey, I'm not really getting, to be honest. And you know what? That actually isn't bad. It's more full bodied now as well. Body has definitely improved. It's not as watery. And it's actually quite full bodied. And they've done that without the addition of wheat as well. So respect for doing that. Um, it actually ain't bad, I have to say. And there's me saying craft brewers can't brew bitter. And there's two that I've had that have been quite palatable. Mouthfeel is good, carbonation is there, it's not intrusive. Um, nice finish on it. Not a big finish, but it's there. Um, quite long lasting as well. And as I say, it's just spiciness and caramel. Um, not bad, not bad. It's pretty balanced, pretty rounded. Um, I could probably drink quite a lot of these actually, 4%. This would go down very nicely indeed. And I have to say, my initial thoughts on this have changed quite a lot. And again, if anyone's watching this channel, if there's any beer review, I know beer reviewers do watch my channel, and I, as I watch, do watch other beer reviewers' channels. Please, please don't make the mistake of just taking one or two mouthfuls and making your mind up, and then that being the end of the review unless it's an exceptionally bad beer which is what I do <laughs> but I think on a beer that initially you can dismiss I think if you persevere with it sometimes you you do find 
especially when you get the whole glass in there. You really do. I mean, that's what I actually meant to say. I'm, I'm trying to say this to you in a very fucking inarticulate way. But what point I'm trying to make is don't pour out a little bit, leave it in the glass, make your mind up from there, from just a, a, a little bit. I think to get the full character of the beer, you have to pour everything out. Now, it is a good thing just to pour a little thing in the bottom, a little, a little sort of drain, sort of like 250 mil or something around that. Give it a swish, get the aromas, get the initial flavours, make your mind up partially so you've got an idea of what the beer is all about and then pour the whole lot in. I think that's the best way to review beer because your initial findings can change a hell of a lot once you pour the whole lot in. I've, I've proved that with Vice Beer on numerous occasions where you pour out half, you don't get the most of the yeast in there and it tastes very bland and nondescript. Then you get the whole lot in there, especially with these unfiltered beers and bottle conditioned beers as well. Now, as I say, I always pour the yeast in. They say not to, a lot of brewers say not to pour the yeast in. I tend to ignore that and pour everything in. It ain't gonna kill you, I hope. <laughs> But it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do you any damage because you eat fucking yeast in bread. So yeah, there you go. Uh, let's have another, another dive into this. It's actually really nice. I have to say, the more, the more it goes down, the nicer it gets. I'm getting elements of biscuit on there now as well on the finish. This really is a nice bitter. I have to say, the Thornbridge, I take it back because up until now, everything I've tried from you has been fucking bang average at best. But I think this is a real standout beer. Wow. Reasonably full bodied. Nice balance between the hops and the malt, smooth, dr definitely drinkable. Now, this is at just the right temperature. This is cellar temperature. I've taken it out of the fridge. I've let it warm up a little bit. And this is, this is really nice, I have to say. I'm loving it, in fact. And I never thought I would say that I loved a Thornbridge beer. But for me, this is the first Thornbridge beer that I've had that's been that's been good, and in fact, I would go as far as to say, this could probably compete with some of the, the well-known bitters that are on the market. Could it compare with Boltmaker, Timothy Taylor Boltmaker? Um, that's a tough one, I think. That's a bit of an ask. I think Timothy Taylor are in a, a league of their own. They're a really good brewer, but I have to say, this is not bad at all. Really nice. The more I drink it, the more I like it. And it's putting a smile on my face. Wow, well done Thornbridge. You've got something right for once. What is the verdict on Thornbridge Lord Marples? Well, I had reservations about it. Even when I was picking this up in Morrison's, I thought, mm, Thornbridge, I'll give them a go. It's gonna be a rant, blah, blah, blah. And this is, what I, this is what, why I love reviewing beer. I love being proved wrong. I love having my preconceptions blown out the water. And I have to say, Thornbridge, you really have done it on this occasion. This is a great beer. It really is good. And the more I drink it, the more I like it. It reminds me a little bit of the Bath Ales Gem. It's that kind of beer. It just, it, it doesn't have massive flavors, but the flavors it's got are well-rounded and it just, it gets moreish as you drink it. And the more that's going down, I mean, I'm almost three quarters of the way down there now, that hasn't really touched the size, it's been that good. But again, I always say, and to be honest, most beer drinkers pour the whole lot out in one go, which is, this is what you do. But if you're a, a beer reviewer watching this, or you like to be objective and you pour a little bit out, and you, which, which I do, and I, I still will do that, Always, always pour the rest of the bottle out in one go and then try it because beer can take on a whole new 
dimension when you do that. And this is a classic example of that beer. Also, I mean, this is up to you, this is personal, but I would always recommend pouring in the yeast. Um, they say not to, well, look at me, fucking anarchy in the UK. But I, I always have done, and it hasn't done me any harm. So yeah, it's one of, them, one of them habits that I have. But getting back to this beer, this is great. I really like it. Is it the best bitter that I've ever tasted? No, it's not. But it's a good one. And there's, I, I really am getting sport for choice now, Danny Morrison's, because like, I've got such a great range of beers that I listed off earlier. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna add this to the list because you know this is a, this is a great beer. Um, I can't remember the price. I think it was about £2.50. Is that worth £2.50? I would say so, yes, it is. Um, there are other beers, good beers around that sort of price as well, but I have to say, I would definitely not turn my nose up at another bottle of this. And for that reason, I'm definitely giving that an eight, eight and a half out of 10. And that is a solid eight and a half out of 10. And I would recommend that. Now, if you're a best bitter connoisseur, which I have to say, I love my English bitters and all that, and I have tried quite a few. You're probably going to say, well, I've tasted this on cask and it was crap. Well, yeah, I can only go by what's put in front of me. And I have to say, that is not a, bet, a bad bottle of bitter at all. I really like it. And yeah, well done Thornbridge. Two craft brewers that have slightly changed my mind on how craft brew, brewed beer is faring in the world and the, the competence of craft brewers. I had a bit of a downer on them. I'm slightly eating humble pie here, but I'm glad to be doing that because it's heartening that there are craft brewers that can brew decent bitter. I mean, these aren't the first. Um, the Wandle Brewery, again, another London brewer, they brew a fantastic um, um, bitter. That They were based in, or they are based in Wandsworth, I think, or South London somewhere. Um, great brewer and standout beers as well for me. Wandle Best Bitter. Sometimes you get it in the Weatherspoons in London and when I'm down there. In Victoria Station they used to do Wandle Best Bitter and I always used to have a pint of it and it was very nice indeed. But this stuff, yeah, recommended. If you can, you can get it on the, on the website, Thornbridge website. Um, not sure whether you're gonna be able to get that in all the Morrisons over the country, but this beer is I would imagine widely available in certainly in the Derbyshire region or uh, that the, the um, is it is that the North Midlands I don't know it's all north to me to be honest being from the deep south there boy anyway that's eight and a half out of ten that is definitely recommended and Thornbridge you have changed my mind well done and remember beer is working class champagne <laughs>